I was always scared of him. It doesn't surprise me what happened. That is what Mary Clayton said about her former husband, 84-year-old Andrew Lester, who is now facing two felony charges in Kansas City, Missouri, for shooting a 16-year-old high school student. Ralph Yarl, who made the mistake of knocking at the wrong door when he was looking for the house where he was supposed to pick up his younger twin brothers. Andrew Lester's first wife, with whom he had three children, told the New York Times, Mr. Lester was prone to fits of rage, smashing objects in their home when he was angry. Back then, when she summoned the police, they told her that it was his house and that he could do as he liked. A relative of Andrew Lester's told the New York Times he spent considerable time at home in a living room chair watching conservative news programs at high volume. And of course, the biggest purveyor of so-called conservative news programs in America is, of course, Rupert Murdoch, whose Fox shows stoke fears of crime, even in low crime areas like where Mr. Lester lives. And within the framework of stoking fear of crime, they are always stoking fear of black people and black children. Andrew Lester told the police that he fired his gun because he was scared to death. One of Mr. Lester's grandsons told the New York Times that his grandfather is, quote, prone to making remarks that he considered disparaging about black people, gay people, and immigrants. One of Mr. Lester's neighbors, who said she was not surprised about what happened, said, if you're that scared, why did you open up the door? Ralph Jarl's mother, who is a nurse caring for her son at home now, said that Ralph was still crying about what happened. She said, there's nothing you can say to him. And last night, I asked Tennessee State Representatives Justin Jones and Justin J. Pearson what they would say to Ralph. What I would say to Ralph um, is that you deserve so much better. Um, and as the youngest black lawmaker here in Tennessee, I, I would say to Ralph that you deserve to live in a world where you, as a young black young black boy, are are allowed to to exist without the fear that um, some uh, racist will see you as a threat just for existing. The reality is, what happened to Ralph is, for most black parents, one of their worst nightmares. Uh, that uh, race is the reason that uh, that person, that 84 year old man, uh, was in fear. It was a young black man at the door. And that uh, stoking a fear of young black children, of black people, that is happening in our legislatures. That's happening in the narratives that are being put out about uh, young people and youth as dangerous, as violent. Joining us now is Lee Merritt, a civil rights attorney who is representing Ralph Yarl. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And I have to say, I was really glad to see that photograph you tweeted today of Ralph and you outdoors uh, on that bench, I guess at Ralph's house. Uh, how is Ralph doing? Ralph is doing extraordinarily well, given his condition. Uh, less than a week ago, tomorrow, uh, he was shot in the head. A bullet actually entered his skull and fragmented. And doctors scraped those fragments off and uh, sewed them back up. And so to say that we were sitting together in the sun yesterday just feels like a real blessing, you know? And it, have you been able to have conversations with him uh, th about what happened? We haven't talked about what, what happened. And he is under the care of a therapist. And I know it's important because of, of the ongoing case that we maintain the integrity of his memory about what happened. And so I, I don't talk with him about that directly. And what is your sense of of how he's able to uh, j just, you know, get through the day now? Uh, wh what is he physically capable of doing? Well, you know what? He, he can walk. He can talk. He he. He spends a lot of time with his little brothers who he was going to pick up that night. He spends time with his, his family. He comes from a family you know, so who will walk to therapy and things like that. He, he believes that he'll be back to school soon, right? He, uh, he, he would like to be back and playing his bass clarinet and performing on a competition on the 27th. He is doing that well that that is a, actually a possibility. And he, it's just one of those situations where uh, his mother is a nurse and there's, there's uh, so much medical expertise around him in the family is just, uh, is just a great thing to hear about.
the family dynamic there and the support that he's received from his immediate community is amazing. Uh, of course, his mom is a, is a nurse. His his auntie uh, Faith is a uh, a, physical, a doctor of physical therapy, and that's exactly the kind of care and, and folks that he needs around people that love him, who understand uh, that the road to recovery is going to be long, but that is encouraging him along the way. Yeah, he has just a really great support system. What is your reaction uh, to the New York Times reporting uh, from people who knew uh, the shooter that they were not surprised? Well, I'm very interested in learning more about Mr. Lester and his motivations. Uh, we have reached out to the Department of Justice and they have begun an, an investigation. Uh, obviously, the evidence that uh, the New York Times uh, has reported on is going to be a part of figuring out uh, what exactly was behind his decision to pull the trigger on a 16-year-old boy uh, a week ago. And so um, I, I, I've been studying that goes closely and, and, and looking to authenticate them as well, of course. Are, are you satisfied with the way uh, prosecutors have handled this so far? No, I have to say uh, we are deeply dissatisfied with how the Clay County Prosecutor's Office has handled this case. This is a conversation that I've had with the family. Uh, from the, from day one, uh, they could have make, and should have done more uh, to detain Mr. Lester after he shot uh, uh, Ralph. And um, it, it seems to me that they were more responsive to media inquiries and um, public out than they were to the very specific need of this family at a moment of tragedy. Lee Merritt, thank you very much for joining us tonight, and thank you for the update on Ralph. We really appreciate that.